you back on mute now because we've got some stuff to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy your cereal, mate. So how have your lockdowns been? It, obviously, it's a negative thing that's happened and it's a terrible thing for mm. a lot of people out there. But I tell you what, there has been some positives to lockdown. It brought the families closer together. Yeah. And I feel like it just really showed me who's really important in my life yeah. and who's actually got my back. And then it had a knock-on effect when it comes to friends. Like, yeah. you know, like people that are best friends, like, that didn't really give a shit. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Speaking of best friends, what's happened with... Pete. Well, we, me and Pete stopped speaking. We had a, like, a falling out at the end of January, and um, and you've not spoken since then. No. You haven't spoken since the end of January. God. It wasn't a nasty falling out. It was quite calm. I just didn't want to have people around me that I didn't feel were a hundred percent. And um, we fell out, and I just basically said I can't have you in my life anymore, and that was that. But when it was in them dark days when I didn't know what was happening, I wanted to say, are you OK? Because like, I know he lives on his own. Yeah. But then I'd think, but you haven't reached out to me. I am really surprised he didn't reach out to you during lockdown because, like, what I... Obviously, knowing Pete, he's normally that guy that he would, you know, check in, and especially on you, mm -hmm. but there you go. He just made me question if I even know him at all. So while we're here, I had dinner around Chloe Sims last night. Good. How is everyone? Yeah, lovely. Good. She said she ain't heard from you since January. Oh, Pete, you naughty boy. What's that about? Because we've had a Barney, and, and the last thing she said to me is she didn't want to... There was no need for us to talk, so... so be it. As a girl, I think when we're mad, we just say the most random shit, but deep down, we might not mean it. We've been close for so many years. We've been through everything, and this is the first time that we've ever disagreed or had a row about saying where I've thought you know what, she actually don't want me in her life. The problem with me and Kyle's were both very stubborn. Yeah. And listen, it's been, it has been months and it's the longest we've ever gone with not talking to each other and I've missed her because we are really, really close. You know, if someone says, don't speak to me, I ain't gonna speak to them. But what worries me is that actually, if I do reach out to her and she tells me to fuck off, it hurt me. I just think it's a friendship that's worth saving. Do I want it to be saved, like the friendship? Yeah, of course I do. Do I think it can be saved? No. I don't want to be rude in front of Peggy, but you was a bit of an arsehole. Fine. Towards the end of our friendship, if you like, I felt like you started dismissing my feelings and I feel like, you're going to look at me or you look at the bush? I feel like you was dismissing how I felt a lot. Like, I, I've confided in you, I've told you everything, like, all my secrets, all my things. I know I'm a lot. I know I can be clingy and I can be jealous, but that is who I am. So if you don't like them things, then we can't be friends, cos I'm not going to change. Hold on, I hold am on, who I am. Hold on, hold no, on. I'm getting to my point. Obviously, when the pandemic happened, there was loads of times where I just thought, oh, my God, like, I need Pete, I need to speak so to why Pete. Didn't you, Chloe? Because, why didn't Pete, you know? because I didn't even know if you would be there, even if I did reach out. I didn't know. I didn't know what to do. And the longer it went, the days, the weeks, the months of not hearing from you, I just thought, oh, my God, he's proving me right. I get that you would have been scared. I get it. And I get that you wouldn't. But I needed you as well. I've never once, not once, no matter what row we've ever had, ever thought that I wouldn't have you in my life. Never. You obviously did. So, actually, as hurt as you may have been from that, and I apologise for that, you saying that hurt me. So why am I going to come up to you now and get told to fuck off again when you don't want to speak to me? What have you been doing? I've been training earlier, and then, as I was leaving training, I walked straight into Mr Peter Wicks. No. Yeah. And? The gist of it was is that he said um, that he's sorry. He apologised. Wow. Yeah. I wasn't expecting that at all. He wants to go back to normal, basically, and he asked me whether we can, and he was a bit abrupt. He was a bit like, it's a yes or no question. And it's so hard, George, because it's Pete. Like, I've worked hard for six months mm. mentally to change how I feel towards him, trying to push all the feelings down and not have nice feelings towards him. But then when he's right there in front of me, smiling, like, it's really difficult because he's so mm. familiar to me. Like, I could easily just bounce back and go, all right, then. But there's a part of me that just feels like... I, as much as I love him and it's Pete and it's still him, there's... I just feel like I don't trust him now. 
this is the point. No matter what you do or whatever goes on between me and you, I've never once said to you I wouldn't be there. I've never once told you I didn't want you in my life. Not once. Not one thing. Ever. I haven't fucked you over, though. Chloe. I ain't no, have I? Let's have it right. This is getting on my nerves. It's getting on my nerves. Do you know what? The point of this is, fuck it, right? No, not fuck it. No. Not fuck it. Listen to me. Fuck it. I made a mistake and I'm sorry for that. But I'm do you sorry. still think that you wasn't wrong? No, I'm not saying that I wasn't wrong. I was wrong for the fact that I didn't take it fucking seriously and I didn't listen to you. And okay. I genuinely, I, like, I am sorry for that. Yeah? I should have done. I genuinely didn't think it was as deep as what it obviously was. And that's because I didn't listen. And that's my fault. I'm gutted that I haven't had you in my life for the last however long it's been. And I would really like us to be Pete and Chloe again. That's why I messaged you saying, listen, I've got a big Chloe-shaped hole in my life. I mean, I have really missed you. It's been tough. Really tough. Listen, you know better than anyone and you know I do love you and I've always loved you, so I'm glad you're back. Thank you. I don't know what you want from me. Cos, like, one minute you're in the forest with Peggy, tears in your eyes, saying how much you miss me and all this shit. Then we have a really fun time out together and everything felt normal. And you said yourself it felt like we hadn't been apart. Mm -hmm. And then nothing. Well, I don't, I don't really know what you want me to say about it. I find it really confusing. Like, I, I, find, I can't get my head around it. And the, one of the main reasons I stopped talking to you before is because I couldn't work you out. Okay. Look, and that's what you do. So then you say, OK, so I'm still, like, none the wiser. It's like living in no man's land. It's, it's annoying and I'm sick of it. OK. I shouldn't this, feel like this. But this is part of where we go wrong, then, isn't it? Because I don't assume that no, there's... We there's don't a... go wrong. I don't go wrong. No, listen. You go wrong. Listen. Right, so listen, on, then. then. So this is where we go wrong, as in our relationship. I don't see this as being like a, a, a big problem or, or, or whatever else you see it as, and that, and that is the issue. This time round, I think I've made a good effort. You've not reached out to me once. It is literally like I've gone back to how I was in January and I can't deal with it. And you're making me feel like shit. All right, well, I don't need to do that, so we'll, we'll work it out. I'm upset, Pete. But that's the thing, you're one of the strongest people I know. Yeah, but I'm not. You think that. You, I don't know why you think that. This is crazy to me, because you know me. All I can think is he doesn't give a shit about me. It might be my mistake. I might have thought you was one person and you're not, and that's fine. But this friendship is fucked. And if you don't do something soon or say something, it is going to end, and that is that. I think you're stronger than you think that you are, and sometimes I, I, I Maybe think... Maybe I am, Pete, but, like... You are, Chloe. Maybe I am, but I'm not how everyone thinks. Everyone has their breaking point. Like, everyone needs someone. But in the same And, like, you, you, you made out like you was going to be that someone in my life, and then it's almost like you pick and choose when you want to be that. So, like, that's why I feel let down. Can you define the friendship? Has it ever crossed the line? Yeah, we've blurred the lines. You've blurred the lines? Yeah. Fair. The emotions spilled over and it... I mean, I'm just going to say it as it is, it, it moved into a sexual relationship. I don't know if you're comfortable with me using that term, but I'm just pulling it out there. I'm just reflecting it back as it is. What do you want it to be, Chloe? <laughs> At this point, I don't know. <laughs> and Pete's like, he knows that I'm not as strong as everyone thinks. I can't be bothered to keep being strong all the time. Like, it's just got so messy and toxic. <laughs> 
just as part of me just thinks it's too far. Like, I don't know if we can go back. I feel like he wants me to be his friend. But I don't know if I can do it. If, if we'd have never blurred the lines, then, then we wouldn't be in this in this position and, and I would still have my, like, my best like, friend. Can I ask how, how long have you guys been friends with benefits, I guess? About two years. Okay. What, is there any pattern? Like, any pattern when it is on? There's a pattern. When he can't have me, he wants me, and then in that way, not as a friend. Yeah. But when I go away, he follows, and then, and then we'll spend time together, and then the minute I switch and want that, he goes, no. And that's led me to take revenge. A few times I've done things to hurt him with, like, other guys. And it seemed to work because he comes back. Because when you go, you go, I feel like I'm going to lose, I'm going to lose you full stop.